Since the dawn of Trekdom, fans for the various series have attempted to decode the hardest code in Star Trek history, registry numbers. But is there any true meaning to them? Can they be used with a little Orphan Annie decoder ring to find out special information about the starship carrying that number? Well, today we'll discuss it and ask the question, does that make sense? Hello and welcome to another episode of Does That Make Sense? A Star Trek themed web series that discusses various odd or inconsistent Trek topics brought up over the years by you, this channel's audience. In today's video, we're taking a look at Starship registry numbers in an effort to determine if there's a pattern to them and what that pattern specifically means. Please note, for this video, I'll only be using canon registry numbers, as well as canon-only explanations for those numbers. Beta canon and fan fiction have no real bearing on this topic, though at times will be referenced for context. And of course, and as always, I'll be playing devil's little advocate about this topic in order to foster amazing discussions in the comment section below. So without further ado, let's dive in and ask the simple question, does that make sense? Ah, registry numbers, one of the banes of fans' existence. Once upon a time, in an era long, long ago, registries were simple, at least to fandom anyhow. Take the good old Enterprise's registry number of NCC-1701. To us, thanks to Franz Joseph, that stood for Naval Construction Contract Number 1701 or the 17th class ever created by Starfleet and the first regular vessel after the initial prototype was constructed. All neat and clean, but even in 1975 there were issues with this format. You see, the USS Constellation would flash across our 13-inch black and white televisions with a registry number of NCC-1017. Of course, that doesn't work at all then, since the Constitution class couldn't be both the 10th and the 17th class to be created by Starfleet Command, nor could the Constellation be the 17th vessel of the class, given Kirk's comment about how there were only 12 other starships like the Enterprise in the fleet. There are only 12 like it in the fleet. Now, fandom has tried to correct this issue with several very imaginative ideas, such as the saucer being part of another class, and being refit into a Constitution class starship design, but that doesn't really make sense at all. And maybe, if the USS Constellation had been the only registry issue in a long line of registry numbers throughout Trek history, we could chalk that up to a simple mistake and continue using the Beta Canon established patterns as a sort of decoder ring for the fleet. But of course, the problems don't stop there. Take the USS Grissom for example. This starship has a registry number of NCC-638, which would have made it the 38th starship of the 6th class ever created by Starfleet Command, and the Auberth itself, the namesake of the class, having a registry number of NCC-602, making the prototype of the class technically the third constructed. And it just gets worse from there. The USS Eagle, NCC-956, was a Constitution-class refit, while the TOS, USS Intrepid, Potemkin, Excalibur, and Exeter all had registry numbers that began with a 16 rather than a 17. And thus, any notion of a starship's age being determined in any way by its registry number has already been blown out the airlock by canon. Such registries can generally flow in a pattern, but they aren't limited to that pattern in any way. And I often get those in the comments section who try to pin down the age of a vessel because they believe that registry numbers all follow in a linear row, but it doesn't actually work that way. Take the Entente, for example. Originally a starship listed as a Federation Dreadnought class, in the Franz Joseph Technical Manual, that Gene Roddenberry decided to use in Star Trek The Motion Picture, which takes place in and around 2272. The ship had a registry number of NCC-2120, again in 2272. Yet, 13 years later, in 2285, the newly built USS Excelsior has a registry number of NX-2000, 
when she was clearly built after the TOS-style Federation Dreadnought. And even in the Star Treks of today, registry numbers are all over the place. Take the Solvang, for example, a California-class starship seen in Star Trek Lower Decks. Its registry number is a mere NCC-12101, even though it was a brand new, just-constructed starship in the year 2380. Meanwhile, the hero ship of the show, the USS Cerritos, built long before the Solvang, has a registry number of NCC-75567. The Luna-class USS Titan has a registry number of NCC-80102 in the year 2380, while the Deuterstadt-class USS Intrepid, an early 25th century design, has a registry number of NCC-79520. So no matter which way you look at it, registry numbers are meaningless to determine age of a starship or a starship class. It seems as though Starfleet Command simply picks a number out of the cadet sorting hat for every starship they launch, which, though confusing to fandom, would work fine in the Trek universe itself, as the registry number is simply an identification number specific to that starship at that point in history. The dash A, dash B, dash C, etc. also seems to be given out at random and sometimes taken away just as randomly. Take the USS Yamato as seen in the Star Trek The Next Generation episode, where silence has lease. Riker identifies the USS Yamato as having a registry number of NCC-1305-E. It's a Federation ship, NCC-1305-E. It's the Yamato, our sister ship. Which would mean that this starship name was actually quite a big deal as some sort of heroic event would have originally surrounded her. But after that episode, she would be seen or mentioned twice more, with her registry number being NCC-24383 in The Measure of a Man, and then in the episode Contagion, where the poor starship meets its maker in the great beyond, its registry number fluctuates from NCC-71807 down to 71806 and then back again. Apparently, Captain Riker had a busy career with the USS Titan, as the next Titan to be built had a registry number of NCC-80102-A tacked onto its hull. But yet, moments later, would be renamed as the new flagship Enterprise-G, yet again proving that registry numbers aren't that important in the grand scale of things. They're simply a number given to a starship to identify it, nothing more and nothing less. No patterns, no hidden agendas, no conspiracies, just an identifying number. But what do you think? Does it make you sad that you can't win a starship's age argument by using registry numbers? Have you found some little gem yourself to explain registry issues? Do you even notice registry numbers at all? Well, leave your thoughts and ideas in the comment section below. I'm looking forward to reading what you have to say. And don't forget, if you'd like to help the channel try to figure out these annoying little details, then please consider becoming a channel member subscriber or channel patron both a major help that allows this channel to purchase resources and 3D models to keep it going. The link to both memberships is in the description below. Thanks again for watching, live long, and prosper.